Boom. Uh, Ryan the Reback and Polo in the house. All right, what you got? What you talking about? In the cold house, it's which cold, is crazy because summertime, it was like, summertime sorry, bro, like sauna's going. And, ago, <laughs> and then this two days of fog came in. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Oh, and then no. it was just like, it's cold now, though. Like, for real, it's cold. So sorry, East Coast No folks. more cold brew. This isn't cold, cold, yeah, but this is cold, 40, like 50 suddenly. Because yeah. we were just in yeah, the summer a week ago. It changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. were wearing shorts and a t-shirt like a week ago. Yeah, well, I always wear pants, but I was definitely wearing like pants and a t-shirt. There you go. Hawaiian shirt, most likely. Long sleeve. Long sleeve sweater. Bundled up. And even a little bit. I wear my face mask just for fun to keep my face warm. That is kind of the name of the game now. Yeah. Yeah. I got a bunch of people looking at me today, and I was like, dude, it's cold out. What do you mean? I'll put a mask over my whole face. (laughs) Exactly. That's the only reason why we should be wearing a mask, to fight off the cold. Yeah. Yeah. Little holidays are upon us. That way it keeps you healthy. Nice. No, that's true. The holidays are upon us. So you brought up something interesting uh, off the pod as we were Uh, pre-prodding. What you got? You were speaking about seven fishes or something. I try to have a little something, something. Of course. What you got? What you got? Uh, So I was interested in looking up the history of the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which is a very popular thing in America. Uh, it seems to stem from southern Italy, more so than central or northern, which I appreciated the article uh, differentiating from, not just because, you know, I'm from the south of Italy or whatever, but just because the north, central, and south of Italy do have different temperature climates. They were definitely, definitely different uh, city-states, and so they each one kind of has its own regional uh, celebrations that they do. So I appreciated the fact that they were like at least three different zones. Mm-hmm. And because the climate is way different, the South is like the Mediterranean. What people think of, I think, when they think of like the Italy villa on the hill with like fields, Rolling a lot hills. of biodiversity yeah. around. Godfather. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what the article was drawing attention to is that um, the Feast of the Seven Fishes comes from more of the southern regions because they had just plain the ability to have you know different uh fish available versus in the north where it's a lot more heavy protein uh that's where like polenta comes from i love polenta Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong but Mm -hmm. it would make sense that a that an area of the world that has access to a bunch of different fish would incorporate that somehow into their tradition Mm. so i was i was interested by that and it said you know it's been really more popularized over here in the u.s And then the part that really got us going was the seven, I guess, is super big in the Bible. And historically, seven has been an important number throughout history. Very true. Yes. For for one reason or another. I don't really know. Don't know either. Gematria people understand that. uh, I know seven is always considered a lucky number for a multitude of reasons. So I could see, understand that. But go ahead. You said seven fishes? Yeah. So Break that down. I always thought it was seven different just fish dish. Separate fishes. Uh, or same well, fish, well, seven dishes. I just I hadn't thought about it past that, and okay. this article was saying it's typically no more than two different fish mm. prepared in seven dishes. Oh, so okay. one fish typically prepared seven different ways, or mm. two fish prepared prepared multiple ways to get to seven. Mm. And I, you know, that's pretty cool for me, just because it's always fascinating. Take one ingredient and kind of treat it in different ways, mm. see what happens. I think it's very cool sustainably, so the hippie in me likes it. Mm -hmm. Uh, The creative side is really cool to take, like, one ingredient and do seven things that definitely stand alone. Uh, And then I was thinking about I was like, yeah, you you definitely could, especially with two fish. You could definitely make, you know, just with, like, bronzini and, uh, I don't know, what's a typical Italian shellfish? I don't know. know. What do you guys have? Clams. Clams. Mussels. Perfect. Mussels. Yeah, you could definitely make seven right away. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with, with the bronzini. I mean, that could be your your main for sure. And, and the different vegetables that grow there and stuff. So, um, I don't know. It just kind of got, you know, all the little electrons in my brain firing yeah. for different things. And uh. it was interesting to think about. Interesting. It, what other possible Christmas um, traditions are there as well? Because we kind of got in a discussion about, right. you know, Thanksgiving being something that's very yeah. particular, especially in America. And then Christmas almost having shades of uh, Thanksgiving kind of tossed in, but right. also kind of the prime rib talking point, and then it kind of just yeah. spirals it from seems there. Much more like red meat, red right? meat based, at, yes, at, at Christmas, mm-hmm. and 
I started thinking about that and I was like, God, it's so weird how when you say like November, December, mm -hmm. they're like the same. Mm -hmm. But then like when you think of Thanksgiving, you're like, that's fall. Yes. And then when you think Christmas, you're like, that's winter. winter. Yeah. And it's like, isn't huh. November kind of already winter ish? I don't, I don't today know. Today feels I mean, like winter. Right? Like today Thanksgiving is. Thanksgiving felt a little warm, if I could recollect. To me, when I think of February, I'm already thinking like spring. Spring. Right? But it's and still so technically. If there's four seasons yeah, winter. a month, it should be like three months, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Is February winter or is November winter? Or is it like you get half of November mm. and half of January or half of February to get that? you know, extra month time of winter. Cause even if that's mm. true, Thanksgiving food should really be more winter food. But I just thought it was interesting when I was looking at different recipes about the different ones and how in your head, you're just like, Oh, it's the same. But then I was like, there's actually not that much overlap. But if I took a Thanksgiving side recipe that I had looked up and the student Christmas, I'd be down, but it just like, wasn't on any list that way. Huh. Very, very minimally. Like was, which one, which one were you looking up? Um, one of the few crossover ones, which is something that I would eat, but I can't ever get convince people to get, would be like red wine glazed shallots. Oh yeah. Right. That's like I'm into something like that. I think that's a great side. What are you, side. A, what are you a European cool. person yeah, right? in 1910? <laughs> but I love that kind of thing. Oh, you loved braise, uh, braise. romaine also. Yeah. I'm assuming yes. Braise celery hearts I, is yeah. your thing? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. But I just found it so interesting that like that was like on Christmas menus and like on Thanksgiving, it'd be like green bean casserole with mm. the fried onion, you know? Yeah. yeah. That was like not on the Christmas stuff at all. Yeah. Huh. Or there was definitely a couple like um, prime rib recipe things for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but it's way more prevalent on Christmas. Yes. And there was a couple like, oh, do turkey, but it wasn't like a recipe. It's like, you could. Yes. You ambiguous. I mean? Yeah. It was yeah. like, you could do the same turkey yeah. you did. I just thought it was, uh, I don't know, is it just us being spoiled for choice that like, no, nah, we're just going to do it different or... Does that some have some historical significance for why they're so different? Mm -hmm. I just, uh, yeah, the more I thought of it, the more I was like, no, that's like Christmas. And like, no, this is like Thanksgiving. Yeah. I it's guess distinct. the cranberry sauce was another one that was like, eh. Made it on the New Year's? Well, I was I was thinking cranberry sauce. And I was like, that's like Thanksgiving. That's and, totally Thanksgiving. But like, the only way I see cranberries being used in winter was like Champagne. for a drink or like yeah. garnet. Champagne. Like, <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, why? I just found it fascinating to see that like why they were so close. They were like they were different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And even in my head, yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't think I would want that at Christmas. But like, why? Yeah, why is that, is that? Why is What's that just built fuck? into me to yeah. be like, no. Let's think about it this way. Let's break it down from the food point. So produce at Thanksgiving, um, along with proteins, obviously produce, proteins, any type of uh, food associated with it versus uh, food available at uh, Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And are there stark differences? Are there... Uh, some things look better towards, you know, the later m part of the month versus where, you know, um, Thanksgiving lands is where you see a lot of first harvests of, you know, yeah. uh, all the squashes Squash. and, you know, green beans are getting picked and, you yeah. know, all the top shit. But why are green bean? Isn't that like a... I thought that's all year. I thought, I thought, I thought but I thought historically <laughs> that was like a spring thing, right? Like that's what I'm beans? thinking too, yeah. And is it just like we... I wonder how that just like made it. To American so Thanksgiving? Maybe it's a little bit like you were saying, um, how like Christmas and Easter and like, uh, what would we say, late summer, there's like mm -hmm. fall harvest festival mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Those have uh, more history and like pagan traditions. Mm -hmm. And so they're much more bound to the produce that's available at that specific time. Yeah. Where Thanksgiving is more of like we made it. The just end. Like yeah. it doesn't seem tied to any historically important or seasonally important function that yeah happens. it doesn't fall it's on a just solstice kind of like we just made it up yeah and so it it's much really more feels arbitrary like that. what's assigned mm -hmm. to it yeah. yeah the significance of the date i haven't really deviled into but i'm thinking like for instance for the green bean casserole if i had to remember thinking about thanksgiving initially i'm to assume that all right green bean casserole comes out of a can Correct. Yeah, I mean, okay. See, so can. now it let's can. break down what a Thanksgiving meal is. It's, it's the turkey. Uh -huh. It's the stuffing. Okay. It's the uh, cranberry sauce, sauce, and then the uh, green bean green casserole. casserole. Mashed, Those, potato, mashed potatoes. 
what's another what's another stand and then some kind of sweet potato sweet potato sweet potato pie maybe uh, you could make it on the dessert or that's like, the those savory. are like the ones i think of right away yeah okay when so I now that we know like that yes. table in my head i'm just like those okay now if you go back to let's just say the 50s or whenever uh-huh. the microwave was hot or canned foods hot all that except the turkey and the mash is out of a can, at least in my head, traditionally, mm, mm, because the yeah. green. That's why your point when you're like, "Oh, green beans doesn't make sense. They're available usually springtime. They're really not because it's canned." Yeah, and then anything with the maybe yams, they just had to get through their inventory. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe they just were. Well, like, they're like, we got a lot of you know. It put this and push this yeah, out to because we're not going to be able to push dumbbells. these in two months when green beans are fresh. Let's get rid of this. That's what I'm thinking. And now it, it become a staple. Yeah. See, yeah, that's why I liked your point about like yeah. Thanksgiving is more just like we made it. It's not yeah. like tied to the season in any way. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it definitely has something to do with that. And the story is based off of, you know, the pilgrims mm-hmm. and Indians breaking bread and peace and all that. But, mm-hmm. I mean, historically, at least from the food side, um, I mean, mashed pota- potatoes are rolling around all year long. I mean, you can make an argument and say, yeah. you know, harvest for the, yeah, definitely sweet potato. But I'm always of the assumption yams and all that canned. Mm-hmm cranberry yam yeah. you know when the cranberry comes in with the oh, mold i love that stuff so, so i'm saying so love. i'm thinking the that was based off of yeah. almost a need to get rid of this like shit, we gotta maybe. sell this yeah, like yeah turkey. And maybe how many it, times turkey's coming out of the year except for that year every every thanksgiving we talk about this too That's what or, I'm saying. and i'm just like dude no one eats turkey all year except for this one day it's so weird i mean i'll eat turkey dude, all year you can't even buy it during yeah. the year except yeah. for ground it's turkey you and have to some like smoke legs. go to safeway and like yeah. be like hey in like you two or three turkeys. days can i get a whole turkey and they're like I'm sure yeah weirdo. are they not <laughs> yeah. harvesting them or are they just letting turkeys like do that up all year but then the we still get turkey breasts we yeah, you can always turkey. get. Well, yeah, you can always get turkey breast, dude. And you're I, still getting, you know, deli meat all day. Yeah. So I'm like, no, why I'll, is it I'll just eat turkey year round? Well, I randomly. want turkey because I'm trying to just do my own deli meat at home. Yeah. But I realize, oh shit, you can't even buy turkey breast at the store unless it's like the week of Thanksgiving. You have to like go to the deli department and do a special and be order. like, hey, can I get a turkey breast? And they're like, uh, is there not one out there? That's usually when I first get. Is there not one out there? <laughs> Like, no. <laughs> we got smoked legs. You want yeah. smoked legs? Like, yeah. No, I don't want smoked well, legs. I think we got some smoked legs, yeah. We got ground turkey. Is that what you're looking for? I'm like, no, you're looking for ground turkey. Yeah, ground turkey. Maybe that's what they do with the turkey the rest of the year. They just grind it. They, they probably know. do it with the breast, for sure. Yeah. Because that shit is dry sometimes, it's especially dry. some shitty brands. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then now we have Thanksgiving life around there. Then but you I go to. I think yeah, there's some of this, like. The solstice, because uh, I think that's yeah. the produce. But I don't know what the feast is. So now to your point. You've pointed out the prime rib. I don't know how and why prime rib made it to Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, but Christmas. Christmas. I yeah. personally maybe have had it one time in my life during mm-hmm. that time, but um, I don't know why that is. I I'm not even a big fan of it. So Not really. I mean, I, I like okay. going to buffets and casinos and maybe, you know, uh-huh. I, I know, know that's an antiquated look. There's so many other things I'd rather eat before. What would you eat on a Thanksgiving or on a Christmas thing? Mm. Not you like you actually, but just theoretically, like this would make sense for a, a Christmas feast, considering all the things that you mm. ever This is read such done. a great question. I, I mean, don't know. Saying. It's strange, uh, right? Yeah, well, of... <laughs> I just, I, I don't eat that much anymore. So uh, I think. I don't know. What did I do last year? Uh, I guess uh, last year didn't really count. Yeah. I, well, we, yeah, we do eat a lot of charcuterie. <laughs> Which I that's think is sure. appropriate for the holidays. To yeah. be honest, that's probably the most overlooked thing. One, preparation's easy. Second, it's abundant. Third, everybody loves it. Well, it would make sense historically, too, of like you're going through your stuff that you preserved through the, rest of the year. See? You can't be outside. The weather's not. That's what I like to. I, that's what I try yes. to keep in mind. And it's like maybe it's like a little paleo, but it's like, mm. what would we have ancestralized? Why ancestrally yeah. been eating during this time period? That like your body was like, I need this. Like, mm. cause, you know, we evolved to survive. True. Right. So, uh, if they survived back in the day and they were, you know, all fit and stuff from all the stuff I've been reading, you know, they were like in shape and being yeah. nomadic was better for you or whatever. Paleo. Um, what were they eating? You know, they weren't, you know, they probably were eating a big piece of red meat that they had preserved Mm. or somehow caught that woolly mammoth. And they were like, cool, let's all get together. And like, we have just enough that maybe that's why Christmas is so meat first. When you think about it Mm. is like, there's not that many vegetables left that are growing. Mm. There's not that many left that we could save, or they've all gone bad or we had to, you know, let them keep going, and we just have their seeds that we're carrying around. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to think of Christmas right now in my head, and I see just like a table with food on it, but I couldn't 
pick out not one thing. Mm-hmm. I guess mashed potato for sure, because that goes everything. That goes yeah, with everything. Mash is nice. Yeah. I definitely see like you know the the rack, some kind of crown. Yes. Yeah. That makes like sense. Lamb crown, yes. pork crown. Yeah. Rib crown. Every cookbook I've ever seen that has anything to do with the holidays or article always has like a crown yeah. something. Yeah. But those little frilly things on the end. I don't yeah. Know those <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what they're called. I love those things though. Oh my uh, god. I don't even think don't people know. do that shit anymore. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, for me, I don't know. I would just want to eat some like squash with some kind of grain, something mm. simple. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything for Christmas. You know what's interesting? Know. As we were just talking about that crown thing, am I to think that there was a time in American history that the everyday person at home could cook that? I think that was like what we expect that people were doing. Right? Because you weren't, nobody was doing this takeout situation. And, and no. I'm, 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 as, I'm saying that because I was talking to, uh, uh, a, a friend of mine who you know used to work in grocery, and I used to work in grocery. And uh, the holidays are big because it was a lot of this, you know, pre, yeah, pre, getting stuff ready for people. Or big even I used to work in a deli, and they, we would actually have you know cooked everything already for yeah. the people to prepare. Just reheat. So the yeah. business, at least that I remember dealing with at that time, I was like, this is I didn't even know this was a thing. Mm. And then to your point mm. about man, people used to use the rack, and I used to look at these cookbooks, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like. Oh no! The everyday person had at least the ability to create yeah. this at home. Yeah. To where now it seems like a free for all. I think to I your mean, point, why you can't fits. find out what it is is because Christmas in my head, I'm thinking one of two things: you just bring your best shit there because this is a family thing, and yeah. it's normally like a you know everybody puts their best shit, their best plates. That's mm-hmm. what I'm assuming. And then on the other side, what you were talking about with the paleo thing and kind of that deal with the whole harvesting thing in my head, if I had to think maybe it was, you know, the first, uh, or the hunt, like whatever they had Mm -hmm. that was to feast it. And then the rest of it, they were probably going to pack for the winter. I would assume. So maybe it was the fresh kill and it, because it was celebratory, which I'm Mm -hmm. of the assumption that protein only made its way, uh, to everybody during a celebration because, you know, protein was probably harder to come by. Mm-hmm. And then they all kind of relied on, you know, winter yeah. vegetables, like you said, squash, yeah. grain, barley, something like that. If we're talking about, you know, yeah, yeah. back in Before, the day. Before, like, refrigeration. Yes, yeah. When, so that's what I'm thinking. When pickling was, like, the shit. novel. Yeah. You know, people were just figuring out. Yeah, it would make sense, too, that if you had just gotten a kill, that you would use the parts of the meat that are best right away, right away. that are more tender. Mm-hmm. You know, you wouldn't want to pack the tenderloin of something in the snow and let it freeze yeah. and then re- rethought and then Later cook on, it. Yeah. You right. want some bone shit in. And yeah. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Could be, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think the same thing. I couldn't really pinpoint, like I said, I think you hit on the head with the, the primary, but I'm always seeing that. I think mm-hmm. mash makes it for sure. Um, I could see more like a feast, like very heavy protein laden, uh, dessert laden for sure. I know dessert, that Christmas yeah. kind of leans I think its it hand booze more a towards lot it. during Christmas. A lot yeah. of booze, a yeah. lot of booze, which yeah. makes sense. It's celebratory. I'm assuming it's celebrating the thinking, end of the year. Yeah, actually, now okay, now I'm uh, thinking here we go. Here of, we go. Uh, Christmas is a lot more very similar to New Year's, where it's like booze forward, mm-hmm. and yeah, there is some kind of main component to the meal, mm-hmm. but it's much more like everyone brings their best appetizer yes their best one two bite thing like everybody trying to flex on i know we always do like smoked oysters with Ooh. with cheese on little butter crackers oh that's, that's a killer right there. that's nice or like cream cheese with pepper jelly yeah and crackers yeah. you know lots of different like the charcuterie yeah. it's very cheeses. eclectic in the combination yeah. of food that everyone happens. you know someone brings that uh deviled eggs oh yeah Dude, fucking i'm gonna have to do deviled eggs on the menu soon because I, I don't do it enough too much. those are so good but yeah, that's what I think about Christmas is a lot of like snacky, like mingling mm-hmm. with uh, family from out of town, yeah. friends that are stopping by to drop off their presents with you and then leave and go to something. A lot yeah, of, it's a lot of on the move. Like that. Yeah, it's not so, why so would much you of sit a formal down for dinner. A big meal? Yeah, even on a Christmas thing. I mean, even though the way I observe it and how we celebrate, it's more liking both holidays are like mm-hmm. interchangeable. But in thinking about it that way, I see that more often, especially in American culture, where it is pick up, drop off, swing by, hop by. Yeah. So there's just kind of food probably going Lines on. Lines up with the caroling thing, too. Boom. You know? Yeah, because you're I've offering I've done a couple of those parties yeah. where, you know, like someone had to host and some caroling party, and they were like, yo, uh, this is way too much. Can you come help me? I'm like, sure. And 
Yeah. You know, it took us like two days to get ready. But yeah, it was a lot of like they made homemade apple cider mm. or what the hot the hot apple drink. I guess that's yeah, still apple cider. apple cider. Yeah, 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 but they made it and then there's like uh what's like the the marinated red wine, uh but you serve it hot. Oh, I uh, never even had that. No, yes, you have what though. The it's, fuck it's, are you talking about? it's not mead because mead's that honey drink, but it's um like it's mead. Like, it, yeah, it's it's like sangria but served hot. You know what I Whoa, mean? Whoa, I've never no, had that. Okay. I don't think so. I'll, I'll look it up. That's crazy. Um, next time you're you're talking, you're that doesn't even spree. sound fun. Ah, oh, dude, what is hot that wine? What you it's, it's it's like warm. It's, <laughs> someone is losing their mind right now. Just like it's called. Uh, I thought I that know. would work. Um, but lot we yeah we made like a bunch of like different shortbread cookies, mm-hmm. a bunch of yeah, little snacky, very snacky. appetizers so that people could come fill up, fill up whatever yeah. like fig and cheese, like fig jam and cheese. Yeah, and then it was like all right. Let's go on this little wagon thing and sing carols. Mm. And we all got our little, you know, drink. And if you were smart, yeah. you had two hands. So you got two drinks because it's cold as fuck yes. outside. Keep your hands warm. Keep your yeah, I guess warm. that's what I think about. As you think about it, that yeah, actually makes more sense now. Lots, lots of snack because yeah. it's not that, like you're on the move, like you're in a rush. But mm-hmm. it's like, oh, okay. You're I'm, visiting. I'm, yeah, I'm visiting with you and I want to not sit down away, you know, 10 people away on the table from you. It's like, okay, I'm mingling with you for a little bit. I go to the separate part of the house and I mingle with this group for mm-hmm. a little bit. Then I mingle with this group for a little bit. Yeah. And then we're all going to go outside and go see the lights for a little bit with our little Yeah, yeah. the light scene. So, yeah, yeah, you're on the move. It's like casually And moving. it's a congregation of a lot of people that are coming together. So I think everybody's bringing an app. Everybody's – I mean, there's probably something central. Like, as you were speaking, I was thinking about what culturally other people do. Like, I know tamales is very um, – synonymous with christmas uh as well as like uh lumpia um i mean there's all yeah I knew mold, mold wine mold wine you've never had this who drinks this yeah i don't know i don't spiced know spiced mold wine yeah i knew it I was like, this is horrible oh especially around christmas you know where's yeah. the origin of this i don't know good luck uh, it sounds like an Italian thing. <laughs> it does. Let's, we have so much wine. Let's keep some warm. <laughs> let's, let's, we got so much, dude. It's uh, fine. Let's warm some up let's warm some in up. the maybe, kiln. Maybe it was the wine that was like didn't come out that. Maybe it's exactly like the wine that, that like, the, wine. the neighbor made that it's like. Mm, it was a second draw. You're well, like, I told you not the second draw. We should just did one press. We're just going to put a bunch of spices in it. Uh, oh, geez, fine. That's the discarded skins <laughs> for making the white. It was like, all right, just run that one more time. Right. Let's just see what we can do that's with this. That's not the extra virgin. That's no. the extra used. That's used. That's old. Let's go beat yeah. it up. Skins. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think you're on to something. Because, uh, like I said, tamale. I think maybe this. Yeah, maybe Christmas right. is more of a giving thing. Because tamales oh, traditionally are always like kind of made around this time. Okay. And it would seem, even though it, Thanksgiving does have that, like, hey, I packed you a plate. But yeah. with Christmas, it seems like almost you have, whether it's your, your cookies or whether your apps, or even if you are the, the prime rib guy, you're almost like, okay, I'm going to... This is going to here, and I'm going to bring some of this to here, yeah. and it's kind of more interactive. To transport one yeah. bite things rather than like I'm bringing a pot roast to you, yeah. and I'm bringing a pot roast to you. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. it's more of a hey pot roast. That's come another here. like holiday thing. Holiday yeah. thing I think it's. pot roast starts uh, the minute that I got to put a sweater on. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe uh, that, that's go. why Christmas is like. You can't really think like you can think of like one main dish with one little side. Mm-hmm. But I can't really think of anything else because it's like that's probably what you made for your home. Yes, was like I made enough prime rib for like eight people. Yeah, enough dinner Just, like for enough the main people. Food, so yes. like when we get back, we can eat. We got food and then go to yeah. bed. Yeah. yeah, but it's a lot more like yeah. Oh, oh, uh, the Jeffersons are coming by. Yeah. Oh, and Sally's coming by. Yeah. Oh, and your aunt Larry oh, is coming they're, by. Oh, they're they're bringing. The, and we got to make sure that we send them away with some little you yeah. know their gifts and a snack. Their yes. gifts and, and have a have a drink. Have some shitty. Red wine that we turn yeah, have some play. hot wine. Yeah, Boom, have some have hot some, wine because it's gifs. cold outside. Yeah, and here's your you go. fig and jam and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. That would make sense that you wouldn't. The focus isn't the like the big main plate no. like Thanksgiving where mm. you're posted up. Yeah. You're but sitting. It's, it, yeah. it's like oh, we're kind of moving around. You're mangling. Yeah. yeah, you'll get a plate. There'll be usually, and this is not to say this is how all shit goes. We're just kind of speculating here, folks. But it would be more like a. A smorgasbord of all, you know, things that only come around during the holidays. And yeah. then you are, it's true, it's mingling because most Christmas parties exceed a certain number for the most part when people throw parties, meaning your people from out of town are coming in. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, it happens, but not like how it happens in Christmas. Not like how, because yeah, usually mm-hmm. Christmas, you know, now you get like a week or 
a week and a half. Oh, like yeah. students get like what two weeks out two of school weeks? or something. Almost, yeah. Point, all all the way into the new year. Yeah. I mean, they get bundled in with the New Year's essentially. Yeah. And you know, and we've talked about New Year's before, so New Year's big is companies just like that. are just like screw it, go home to your family mm-hmm. for a week or yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking everybody's coming in town. So obviously, and Sally's bringing her, you know, da 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 this, and then you know, Uncle Jerry's bringing his thing, and yeah. then we're all doing this. Yeah, I'm even, yeah. That's yeah. what it seems like, but I mean, it's never, it's never definitive like how Thanksgiving is. See, that's what we were talking about when yeah. Thanksgiving is definitive. Not as set. It's yeah. not as just pre predetermined. Yes, it's very much. Like, it's vague oh, as fuck. I I looked up this new mm-hmm. deviled egg recipe with, yeah. with bacon jam. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try it this there year. There you go. And, like, oh, and whatever, if it's bad, everyone every only year. has to eat one bite. Yeah, because <laughs> so, so, anybody who does deviled eggs first one to go, and there's never enough. That and, always and, goes. But then everyone's just like, ah, I don't know, it's kind of too much work. I'm like, yeah. It is a lot of work. <laughs> that's why nobody makes a yeah, lot of them. Like, oh, fuck that. I ain't making a whole but bunch dude, of But I remember as a kid, I saw deviled eggs. Those are mine. I probably was, yeah. stink. I wasn't on big way. on them, but I did learn how to make them mm-hmm. in the way that I would like them. And I do like the smoked trout shit with the Ooh, fucking crispy. Oh. Yeah, that shit is like. I want to try that. With the crispy skin on top. You know, yeah. Crisp the dude. skin up a little bit. I think about that every time I buy the salmon from you guys. I'm like, one of these times, dude, I'm going to have enough time to like take this, take the scales off the skin. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna do the puffy salmon oh, skin. Yeah, yeah. I never have done it because I man. never had time. It's good. it's good to do it with smoked salmon too, because yeah. sometimes we would have this the, oh, the oh, smoked dude, salmon. The scales off the, the smoked oh. salmon. <gasps> to be honest, I just I fry it with the scales on. I'm like, chop that up, eat that shit too. That's true. Some of the fish, the fuck. scales are so small, like yeah. cod and stuff. Yeah. I don't even take them off. Who cares? Nah, I'll eat it. They're gone, dude. Yeah. Just extra crispy. That's what I'm saying. It's like, do you peel apples there's when you some, eat them? Like, what's wrong with you? Just eat them. In there. <laughs> Come on, man. That's Damn, now I really want to like deep fry some like smoked salmon. I'm telling yeah. you. I yeah, some. no, but fucking deviled eggs are amazing. Um, but yeah, no, I was definitely thinking about that. I'm definitely on board yeah. with the whole, the like I said, the tamales thing resonates with me because I, I like uh, anybody too. I talk to, only tamales are made only at Christmas time. Well, because you need a group. That's I true. I mean, you can do it by yourself. You're yeah, just you there. can't make I like mean, ten. Fine, but it's you not start enjoyable. Tamales, you're making uh, hundreds of yeah. them because but that's like another good food that like okay, we made like the ten of us made like a thousand. Boom. So yeah, we were hanging out, took us all day, whatever. Yeah. We were having a good time. We ate some that night, and then everyone took some home, mm-hmm. and then you distribute them even farther. Distribute. It's and all. It's very much like yep. communal. Of like, let me very share this communal. thing I made with you because I got together with a group and we were more efficient in a group. So yeah. we made extra. So. Here you go, here you go, here yeah, you go. It always goes to someone and it's I trade frozen. You this tamale yep. for some carrots that you mm-hmm. grew or whatever. Thing. Like my mom used to always make like a bunch of lumpia oh, and it'd man. be hundreds. Like we'd have a separate fridge, freezer, Just in for the that. garage. Then, the whole entire thing. Cause she yeah. used to like, you know, sell and them. Were type you shit. looped into of course, to, to making them? Four o'clock in the, the five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> my mom be there, like the biggest like mixing bowl. Yeah. And then the mixture up to Mounded. here. And then me and my brother would be over here peeling like wraps. Half, half asleep. I'm on I'm on peeling wrappers like for like <laughs> nine hours. And the cool part was we would do a taste test and my mom would take a little uh, little piece of the meat and fry them up for breakfast mm-hmm. over rice. So oh, essentially dude, that sounds great. inside me. Oh, and then a little fried egg. Uh, that was the best shit. That was my I favorite bet that thing. Was so good. <sighs> and then she'd just be there rolling all day, and then we'd freeze them all up, and then she'd fry them in the morning the next day, and I'd wake up to the smell of fried lumpia. Oh, it's one of my favorite things yeah. of all time. But yeah, to That's your point, tough. it is kind of it brings out whatever culturally, um, you pretty much your not staple dish, but it's going to be one of those shared dishes. Because yeah. tamales isn't the best, lumpia isn't the best. I can only imagine what other cultures are kind of making around this yeah. time. Those are the only two that come to mind right now. Um, yeah, it's like it's just something that's communal because that's mm-hmm. a group effort too. So you figure, and I think to my point about you know when we were talking about the meat thing, the whole tribe comes together and they help yeah. you know break down the meat, probably package it up, then they feast together, and then everybody goes home with their own separate yeah. thing. It's kind of like maybe that's. Do you think the every thing. culture has some kind of um, lumpia tamale? You know, some kind of protein wrapped in in pastry or dough. Um, it tradition? seems like that would be the case. During the holidays, I don't know if during the holidays specifically. I I am not. Every, they all out have as some much. kind of like dumpling. There's definitely something like yeah, that. There's, there's, there's a there's finger a food in every culture. For every culture. Yeah. There's a that, dumpling for every culture. Yes. Stores great. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Because I mean, tamales could be extended all the way to South Africa or not South Africa, South America. Mm-hmm. Most con- most of those uh, countries dabble in like a you know banana leaf style. Yeah. Um, if yeah. not a corn husk style. Yeah. So that's majority of South America for the most part. That's just generalizing, folks. Don't be offended, all you Brazilians, mm-hmm. Chileans. Argentinians, whatever. Right in. Tell uh, us um, your tell us your little thing thing. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to think. And then who else? Uh, with lumpia, I mean, that's all 
Asia for the most part. Sure. Everybody does some version of egg roll, Shanghai, mm-hmm. Lubia, um, whatever that is. Middle East, uh, I mean, yeah, they got what? Yeah, Morocco do. has like those. I, uh, I can't think of what they're called. Uh, uh, not Spanish. L- Libe, Tibe. Uh, is it Tibe? Kebe. Is it Kebe? K K I B B B B E H. Yeah, yeah, there's. I mean, there's multiple kinds, but one of them is definitely like like wrapped up. Yeah, uh, actually, in Brazil, they do. That's weird. In Brazil, they do one that's almost the same. It's like C C O X I N T E U L Quixto or something. It's uh, some kind of like similar to dumpling in like a little. I don't know what the Brazilians are weird though. They're the only ones that speak Portuguese, so I don't know what's going yeah, on with them. I don't but know they're in addition to that, the one I saw the other day, that one with the C whatever word, yeah, it looks very similar to like Kebe. Yeah. See, there you go. See, so there's yeah. some kind of thing visually, here just from the outside. Yeah, visually. Yeah, so there's definitely some kind of dumpling tradition in. Some kind of, of the stuffed protein mm-hmm. around in something vegetable or, or yeah. grain or some kind. The Greeks of do like the dolma. Dolma. That's definitely a, like a holiday thing. Dolmas are holiday That's for sure. Holiday I had thing. no idea what that shit was, and mm-hmm. then I remember we used to get them at the deli store. Yeah. They would come in a uh, they would come in a can. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Great food. I was like, eight. I was like, oh shit, this shit ain't this shit ain't bad. Time out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ain't bad. This this yeah. great fruit. Yeah, some kind I of tradition that. of like. The tribe Coming reconvening, together. getting mm-hmm. together around like the home base, per maybe like dismantling this huge woolly mammoth thing, mm-hmm. making it all together because it's faster yes. to have specialized groups yeah. of people, and then like okay, now everyone take their share home. Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, we're gonna eat, we're gonna drink, we're gonna yeah. dance, we're gonna celebrate. And, like, this give other each group, other gifts. This other little side group is just gonna keep us all fed while we do it. Yeah, that is kind of how yeah. it feels. I almost yeah. would make the argument that would be the case. Um, I'm really trying to think of the samosas. Samosas, samosas. are insanely good. Yes. I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. they're those are being made currently right now. There's some mm-hmm. you know group of people mm-hmm. slowly getting their samosas. Raviolis are up. huge. Come on, holiday thing. The raviolis. Why yeah. is there a significance with raviolis in the holidays, or just kind of? I think. Same, same thing, like same deal. It, you, it's faster to do them in a group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that I know that's sense. what my friend's on, mom. Man. He said that on the the morning of the run to feed the hungry, he didn't come because she wanted to stay home and make raviolis for Thanksgiving. There day. you go. See, but that's a definite like. Oh, I only get this out for the holidays because it's a lot of work. But yeah. I do it for my for my for my tribe for my tribe for yeah. my fam. See, so there is something to be said, and I don't know if it's celebratory for the end of the year. I don't know if people recognize uh, winter as the year coming to an end yeah not sure how people observe and i'm always trying to figure it out through the uh the solstices i think mm-hmm. that as we talk uh, about a lot of things we talk about already on the pod um especially dealing with history uh i try to keep it around those parameters just more for uh you know kind of awareness i guess yeah. because you i didn't realize how the solstices uh and the equinoxes are significant along with you know the stars and the moon and the sun right. type shit and significant with buildings all around the world and kind of its place. That's how we survive. The that's pattern what I'm recognition that Come kept on, us alive. Man. Yeah, that's and then species. on top of that, that's in coincidence with a lot so, of the farming and a lot of the it harvesting would make and sense shit like that, that. Like the thing that kept you alive, the pattern recognition mm-hmm. that you're like, okay, well this thing is important. Let me like. Yeah. When I start doing stuff, kind of like keep that in mind. Yes. Let's you know? celebrate so naturally, that, allowing us to have the bounty yeah. and then being able to, you know, slowly transition into the next, uh, you know, the next phase of, of the year. And, yeah. I, and and the Christmas does feel like the, the coup de grace. This is like mm-hmm. all of our hard work is now, you know, being uh, recognized and mm-hmm. we're all seeing and we're all in company. And then now let's feast and have a good time and then make preparations for, you know, the next year. Well, it makes sense for large groups to get together during cold times, too, because it's easier to heat one large group Mm. than like 101 people. Yeah, that's true. Groups. Yeah. There's something about gathering. More more efficient. Mm -hmm. You know, one fire can heat 100 people or one person. Why not let it do 100 and save your resources for the other fire? So naturally, it's like cold weather comes. We tend to huddle in different manners in different ways. Uh, now it makes me think like, well, New Year's is almost just like a, a pass through. It's like, oh, I mean, we recognize yeah. it, but really, we're just kind of getting faded, and then it's officially a new year. But technically, Christmas almost seems like it is the definite like, okay, yeah. year has come to an end. Yeah, boom, the winter solstice. Your, is yeah, like, winter cool. solstice. Yeah. All right, we're halfway through the the hard time. We're mm-hmm. just we're almost there, sticking yeah. out for a little bit. You mm-hmm. know, three more suns, five, ten more suns, and and we we're got to go. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a trip. Yeah. yeah. I could see. Tied uh, into Christmas, the moon, yeah. probably. Okay, it's winter solstice. Okay. Mm. We just gotta make it through one more moon. Yeah. That's it. We're almost there, you guys. Hold hold yeah. on just a little bit longer. Here's here's a bunch of snacks to take to your little hut. And yeah. Like, just hold out. Yeah, one, I think one that's more, what it one is. One more too. moon, and we're there. Yeah, because yeah. ain't no one out there like then we can go super back harvesting in the water, the and, yep. and the sun will start coming back, and yeah. the nature's bounty will provide for us in spring. Yeah. See, I, that's I, I personally think sense. there's a lot in in that. That's, I think so too. The that's why there's I so research. many different. Yeah. In in my opinion, that's why there's probably so many different pagan roots in in modern day uh, religion it's, and traditions. Yeah. Because it's like. They were just surviving. Yes. They're just surviving. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, well, I want these people to believe in me. So I'm going to tell them that my God said that that moon means this. Mm-hmm. And people already believe that that thing's magical anyway. So, so whatever so you say is already. Why not yes, just sir. give it a story? And they're like, oh, you definitely know what you're talking about. I'll mm-hmm. follow you. Yeah. See, yeah. that does make sense. I, I, I agree with you. I think the more that is speaking on like the history stuff and, and, and recognizing like solstices and uh, equinoxes and shit. I'm like, yeah, I think that definitely plays in a part. And I think to the paganism and, you know, like old school druid practices and whatever all that shit mm-hmm. is, it's like, mm-hmm. that's definitely has to have matriculated into religion because religion, obviously. You need some kind of verification that you know what the hell you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah. Like you can't just like Make between the spring and winter solstice, <laughs> just be like, no, today's important. We're like, no, it's fucking no, not. Nothing I mean, happens. I mean, Thanksgiving technically is like that. Like, yeah. Hey, this will happen. But, but that, like, but that only happens, <laughs> you know, here. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think the canned food people were just like, yo, we yeah. need to make some sales. Let's release Let's, these cookbooks yeah. or like on Come our can on, man. on our on our cans of beans be like great for this. Dude, I don't think people look up That's recipes still a current like they market do. trend. Come on, man. People don't look up recipes yeah. for Christmas like they do Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I know. For Thanksgiving, people are like, no, my grandma invented this. And it's like, I bet you, I bet it has yeah. something like your grandma was, you know, kind of broke during the Depression, was like, yo, green beans, 10 cents a can. Yeah. Oh, but I can make this with it. All right. Uh, crispy onions? Cool. Yes. And then it was like, yeah. oh, I know how to, like, make it a little bit extra. Yeah. I think, if thing. anything, America fancied up what Thanksgiving is. Yeah. At rudimentary, I mean, you're talking about dressing being a staple. When's the last time? When are you <laughs> eating dressing aside from Thanksgiving? I mean, you mean don't savory, say bread salad. Savory, no. savory bread pudding? Uh, savory bread pudding, no. no, no. Bread salad, none of that. Nope, bread that salad. is that is stuffing. That's uh, something else. <laughs> well, that has another word. That don't count. That's just panzanella? restaurants being smart with their word. Yeah, yeah panzanella salad. Panzanella. Come on, man. Yeah, savory bread pudding is not stuffing, right? No. Even though it's, it's exactly stuffing. the same it's thing. Stuffing. <laughs> it's stuffing. Come on, man. It's the same thing, thing, thing. But see, that's what I'm thinking, at least for when I think of Thanksgiving. But for Christmas, yes, I am on board. You know what's funny that makes it in Christmas too? Chapino. Chapino's yeah. hot around this time, yeah. but clearly, I mean that's like a fish stew thing, so it makes sense. But see, with Lines the up. with the way that I understand uh, Chapino, it initially was you know fishermen crabbing, uh, or not fishermen crabbing, fishermen out there to sea, and then they just bring back whatever the catch is. Once they sell off everything, whatever's left over, they put into just a pot, then it's all coming together for them. With it would work broth. great with the what's mm-hmm. that the salted cod too. Yeah, if salted you had cod, like a yeah. salted cod, and yeah. your catch wasn't that great, and you Boom. just picked a couple mussels, you're like, In there. I don't even got to add salt to this thing. I got this Cod yeah. that's already cod salt. that was already on boat from uh, a couple months ago. We've been salting yeah. it all day. Yeah. yeah, but see, Chapino makes it in, um, and that's stew like, and that's very family friendly, mm-hmm. and it's a whole kind of it's like a paella dish. Paella seems to have yeah. taken over yeah. the holidays as well. Yeah, that becomes a big staple. But anybody who knows what paella is, kind of in significance, it's just basically something to get people together. So yeah. essentially, I mean that in theory kind of get plays up to what we're talking about to yeah. do something as a community, mm-hmm. and then it's like. As a thank you, you feed your community with mm-hmm. whatever you got. Yeah, and that's essentially just probably rice part of what they seafood. helped you do that day. Yes, it's there, it's yeah. available. Yeah, you know. So maybe it's that thing of coming together, recognizing it for you know the harvest and the bounty of the mm-hmm. year, uh, including family and loved ones, and then it's giving. You know, even yeah. though Thanksgiving's Thanksgiving, but you ain't giving like f- presents. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. Christmas, you give in presents. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's more of a everybody's in the giving spirit. You know, people going caroling. Um, you know, people. You know, on top of what people do for Thanksgiving in terms of donating their time, Christmas is definitely even more so where, you know, people will have more of the inclination to do more. Um, you know, services yeah. of the nature. More like community yeah, service. community drives, me, canned food drives. Yeah, let me go volunteer. Everybody has the hat on. Volunteering yeah. is around this time. So essentially, I mean, in theory, that is kind of the time maybe to reflect on the year, recognize, you know, uh, wins and losses. And then, you know, if you are feeling of the nature of wanting to help, 
one another that also plays in line with how the food thing plays in line you're just in the mode of giving and it's kind of this jolly time i mean there's a music set for this time of the year there's one for thanksgiving what's your favorite thanksgiving song exactly there's one i love the christmas music dude i'm so into it but see that's what i'm thinking it's like there's i think there's significance to that and and i'm a big music person in i don't play instruments but i i I believe that the sound and resonance is is humongous so Mm -hmm. based on that i mean having a playlist of songs that you know puts you in a mood is already another notch to kind of help along with the whole vibe. It also makes sense that music would be important during like Christmas, aka winter solstice time, because mm-hmm. uh, what is it? One of the first music genres is that Gregorian chant. Oh yes, so yes. You can only imagine like a Neolithic tribe hanging out Come is on. like, oh, we we do our our, our chant. chanting. Yep, like, we do our chant. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. then it's just like sound and and this it's healing part of the time is like yeah. community, and they just get tied together. Yeah, like more and more. You get into that year. like a uh, I don't want to say seance, but it's kind of like that. Yeah, I know. I get that. Yeah, like it's like this very big energy yeah, kind of thing. Really yeah. Imagine like a thousand people getting together mm-hmm. to make whatever dumpling thing, all yeah. making the same sound together Singing, would dan- be very yeah, uh, on, uh, community inspiring. Very powerful. Very powerful. Uh, even like during the Christmas time, it's uh, a Catholics, uh, I think, go to Midnight Mass. Is that yeah, yeah. on There's midnight Eve, mass right? On Christmas Eve. There you go. Yeah. I mean, that's the same idea. Uh, religion or not, I mean, it's still something that we recognize as and there's, then there's a, like christmas day too christmas yeah, day christmas mass yeah see so there is kind of something that happens and, and that's the same thing you're thinking uh when i talk about sound resonance you know the bell mm-hmm. and kind of that whole deal there's it's also the midnight mass for easter interesting see interesting that's the spring that equinox just happen to be tied these these equinoxes come on man and we as we mentioned possibly from you know pagan practices yeah. to some it degree, would just make sense it would make sense to, like why don't if i'm trying to get people to follow me mm. use something where they kind of already have bought into yes why and would i start from zero get a little bit exactly yeah. let you me just you get, don't start from zero if you don't have it. to no I'm not trying to reinvent um, how metal is made. I don't think made. there's no zero. I think everything has been handed down. Now, mm-hmm. what is the accurate depiction or the accurate story? That's yet to be told. But obviously, there is something that we recognize here where mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's clearly something going on, whether it's in the air, um, in the stars and the moon, or if it's just you know our, our certain social situation. But these things are recognized year in and year out. And mm-hmm. how much as they evolve versus how much they say the same, it's obviously, you know, to each person, but I do find it significant in, in, in definitely getting together and along paired with the sound of music. I mean, what is caroling all about? You know, you're singing yeah. to people and there's a certain sound resonance along with the hot cocoa and oh, the lights and the clothes. I mean, it puts you just in a feeling. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It makes you feel warm. Yeah, come on. If it's not all year, this is the this is why some people, this is the best time of the year for some people. Yeah. Food's it's very joyous. Food's more or less like an afterthought, but not in that way. It's just when we're trying to define what we eat on Christmas, it's like eh, there really isn't nah, any. Because look know. how many things are going on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. When I think of Christmas. I think of like caroling and Mariah Carey, <laughs> <laughs> candy, <laughs> candy canes, uh, shortbread cookies, anything that has that crazy looking icing on it that you yeah. see at the grocery store. Why yeah. would you walk in? They're always like five dollars for this. these and all this. Sugar cookies, I guess what you would call it. Uh, mm. What other desserts make it? We don't ever give love for desserts as much. Uh, I know my my mom's aunt mm-hmm. used to make us like homemade Snickers during the holidays. Snickers was, bar? Yeah. What? She'd make like a homemade version. As a, she'd make it as like, a, what's it called? Like a whole tray. Like a little dish. Not like indivi- yeah, not yeah. individual bars, but yeah. Oh, that so was, that means what is she that? was always that lady was always doing stuff like like uh, yeah. the brittle or like the peppermint bark. She was always doing Whoa. stuff like that. Oh, see, it's, so there was a time when yeah. the everyday person at home could really do some high oh, end yeah. shit, especially stuff baking. that like now people are like, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I gotta buy it, I gotta buy it. You can't, you can't make that at home. Yeah, like, no, people see? were always doing this at home. See, that's what my uh, that's what I come to understand is like uh, the generation right before, like whoever is like you know sixty seventy and up. Um, they had some crazy knowledge of cooking and baking mm-hmm. because well, you just couldn't you couldn't just go out. That there was not av- it wasn't available like, like that. Like we're saying, yeah, restaurants are a luxury ingredient mm, even true. today. Even today, they're not necessary. No, they aren't. They, yeah, they, for some people, they become necessary, but that's not what it's I supposed work in to a, be in a luxury 
yes. thing thing. Yeah, it's uh, an extra added kind of situation because these things aren't really supposed to be abundant like how they are now. But obviously yeah. in a city dwelling, it's a little more different. Um, but still, it's like that's not conventional. But yeah, I just find that interesting because uh, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was talking about how... Um, you know, they have uh, neighbors that used to come by. Oh, she used to bake cakes all the yeah, time. And the cookies. neighbor thing is really big on Christmas, too. That's what it's I'm like thinking. The neighbor you don't hang out with all year. Oh, but, you know, the the Jones next door, they always bring us that fruitcake. Yeah. But that, their fruitcake's good. Yeah. Oh, they do That's always someone's cake. sentence. It's yeah. like, I hate fruitcake, but those people's fruitcake. Uh, Everybody no, really knows, not. like, one person who can make good fruitcake. Or one time. If no. we're going to cancel anything, cancel fruitcake, no. folks. As long, well, fine. We can pa- cancel like the American fruitcake, but not like Panatone. Oh, uh, yeah. See, Panatone, Panatone hasn't even, I don't even know if it's made it here to any degree in America, aside from the smaller communities. Know about it. Definitely yeah. in Sacramento, people know I'll about take it. a Panatone because like, I had it last year when I brought you the gift. I was like, hey, this ain't bad. This Have ain't you, bad. You got to get some Panatone and like fry some up in some butter. Yeah, see, that's what you were talking like about. French some French like French toast shit. Too. Yeah, oh see, God. <laughs> see, but that's better than my first experience with like a fruit cake, and yeah. I thought it was a joke. I was like, "This something this is concoction? This is crazy." Weight. What do you mean? This well, is the sludge. things that they put in it, it was like red Marcino cherries in yeah, it, and like oh, oh, almond. What is this? <laughs> this is a cake. This is horrible. Yeah, that was a failure for America. Hopefully, we could cancel that and just erase that from the Some, memory. There are good ones out there, oh, but Panatone is, is is much easier to get and just amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, take and that there's no out of the shot thing, at yeah. making that at home. Yeah, Panatone. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were telling me about that. The process it's is like crazy. Two day process yeah. if you know what you're doing. But yeah, back to the back to the baking thing. It is fascinating that, uh, and also the cooking thing. There was that generation where they were more a little. Uh, more versed in the cooking. Yeah. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe we're going Probably through a quote-unquote renaissance. Money just go out. Yeah. Which also makes sense. I mean, think about it. There's a lot of restaurants that host, you know, parties mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. more than ever, I would think, because for whatever reason, obviously, oh, you don't have to do it at home. It's easy. You just do that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you can. But then no one ever thinks like, oh, but well, also these then people you that are. clean up. And well, then you yeah, gotta get exactly. Out that, you got to get out that china from like the top <laughs> shelf. <laughs> From the because, cupboard that we never use. Yeah, that's the that's the cupboard. Uh, What's in there? Nothing. Nothing. Just, just stuff the china. We use once a year. Well, just in case the president comes or something. Just, yeah, just yeah, in case some foreign dignitary just randomly uh, shows up one know, day. My, my parents still got china up. I'm like, yo, I don't think we're ever gonna eat on this. <laughs> I'm like, you are not. This is the yeah. biggest holiday. No, I cannot. I was no, like, what? No, I'm like, come no, on, no. man. I want to eat off this. This is like antiquated 19. China, fine China is no longer. Like no. anything that China makes is cheap as fuck. <laughs> so I don't know why we have a, a stand with China I know. plates. Like what? China Everything plates, comes yeah, from China. I remember growing up, we had, like my parents had a set of silver, so like actual silver, and that shit was like locked briefcase, like, <sighs> that, like le- fine leather. Why? Locked up. We used it maybe once a year. Why? Maybe. That's what I don't get. I don't, that's why, a lost, that's a lost thing though. But that's a lost, like that's a lost art. I'm I not going to say anything about a, it. But our it's, generation thing is like it, u- utilitarian. Well, something not, happened not with the as, trade like, line. If, if Chinese goods were so rare and unique, and then mm-hmm. today's world is like, oh man, if you ain't, most of everything that is in this place is Chinese, Chinese made. It's like, yeah. I don't know what happened, but mm-hmm. it, it is a strange paradigm shift from not nothing coming from China to everything, everything comes from everything. China. Everything. Well, and, that's and all I'm having saying. like a bad rap for being cheap. Yeah, right. when I'm thinking, no, there used to be people that used to buy Killing uh, the environment a, a right. wooden cabinet to just house plates yeah come on man that, there was literally china cabinets uh, we don't talk about that that much come on man that's crazy to me how that was the case but yeah, yeah. no i mean you know uh, the traditions <laughs> of the holidays is crazy plates. yeah <laughs> dude i'm telling Can't you my, them, my parents got at least a table setting for eight i think in yeah. the and it's still the same display from when i was born yeah. essentially i was like mm. that's the same display because well, that cabinet was expensive too they claim it's like twenty thousand dollars or some shit. I was like, I remember this is the insane. First time I went to someone's house where they like got the plates from the China cabinet and were just using them like regular. Whoa. And I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, Yeah, we use these plates every night. And then looking back, <laughs> I realized it was like they were like the first parents to be parents that were uh, like, This isn't real China, dude. This is like a built in in the home we got and we just put our plates in there. Oh, uh, okay. You know, but uh, it was but as a kid I remember being like, Yo, what? This is a big deal. So, I should have like <laughs> Proper, you know, instead of like normal kid, just like no clanking it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I I think it's like this. No oh, man, that shit. That that is crazy. Maybe we're just slowly evolving constantly. 
I mean, mm-hmm. because these things are slowly. I mean, like I said, it's just not on trend anymore. Yeah, it's not on trend. Maybe that's what it was. I mean, like Maybe the China new, thing, the fruitcake, all that new stuff. Material, earth material, will be discovered, and it'll be like, do you Maybe. want fine diamond, fine diamond plates? For I you? mean, they'll probably start selling. I mean, gold spoons. Gold spoons. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I uh, copper, not copper uh, plates, some, but some new luxury metal or whatever. Well, it's the, I was discovered. thinking about the way that everything is, especially during the holidays. Obviously, Black Friday sales, sales all across the board. But I always look at, you know, like uh, I always look at like food stuff. Always look at like equipment, shit like that. Seeing what the new trends are for like, um, you know, plateware, mm-hmm. dishware, potware, all that shit. And I mean, I'm looking at. I was like, "Damn, there'd be some everyday people dropping some bread on some yeah, housewares, this roasting pan that's got, yeah. uh, you know, whatever special metal and yeah. n- brass handles or Come whatever." On, yeah. Come on, man. But I, yet, I can visualize one of those pans in my head right now. No, I know. I'm just looking at that. The but other it's day. like you use it once a year. That's it. Yeah, and in my head, I'm like, "Why? How is it possible that there, these things are being catered to the the everyday home chef or yeah. a home and people person? are buying into it? But yet, we, I mean. There's a to me there's been a downturn in at least knowing how to cook to some degree mm-hmm. from the past. So now maybe it's this is maybe happening because there's more cooks hopefully or is yeah. this just maybe some people. consumerism thing because yeah. everybody switches out their plateware, silverware and potware maybe as frequently as like every year. Really? I would assume oh. maybe every couple years. That's like crazy. I know of some, you know, people that constantly are buying new pots and pans yes and or oh. plates and and i do you know, not know this cups and shit but i mean i, I don't know if that's a common thing but because yeah. oh, yeah, i'm the a, cups the nice cups always come out come on that's just, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. it's just the little crystal. minute things yes yeah. the minute things you just so rarely like why is this even out like, I, didn't, I didn't even know my parents had wine glasses i'm over here like what the fuck where'd these come yeah. from where'd the Where's the plastic stemless one? I'm Thank too scared said, to use this. I just go with a regular nice. red cup. I don't give a yeah, fuck. I'll give wait. me a plastic cup. Yeah, right but now, instead, it's some weird stemware that happens. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then on top of that, I was even looking at the disposable stuff. Now, disposable this stuff, stuff is, is like, expensive. Yeah, come on, they're coming out with like What's looks egg? like an actual glass. Why? I Why? don't need it to I look know. like a glass. I want it to just be disposable and cheap. I want it to be cheap as fuck. So when I drop it, I'm not like, oh, it's gonna break. Yeah. I'm just like, no, that's like got Mickey Mouse on the no, side of it. That's, that's, that's paper. It'll it's got fine. some weird. So disposable shit has some weird vibe to it now, where some people would just wash it and reuse it because it's kind of expensive. I've seen this. <laughs> Come on. And I'm like, what do you mean you bought disposable? And they're like, well, it was like. Thirty dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, thirty dollars for like sixty plates. No, it was thirty dollars for like ten plates. Oh I'm man, like, what? Do Why you just mean? buy a real plate? Yeah, just at buy, that point, buy like five real plates. IKEA, man, you buy a shit ton of plates. Oh, thank you for saying that. Okay, I buy some. remember that for the mushroom fact thing. Okay, okay perfect. Okay. Oh well, shit, break down the mushroom thing. We're almost right there, anyway. So oh, are we yeah. really? Almost. Yeah, yeah. it was quick. Know, like five right. minutes out. Yeah. Uh, mushroom fun mushroom fact. Go ahead. IKEA is switching to uh, away from like styrofoam. And into mushroom packaging that you just can throw in the ground and decompose itself. Or you can eat it. I I mean, I don't see why you couldn't, but I do know some mycelium you I can't you eat. eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty cool, cool to see a major, major company switching away from plastic and switching into, you know, the 100% reusable. That's I, I just, pretty dope. Yeah. So like wait, recycle. so what happens though? Are we going to start seeing this shit where people just take it out of the box and just throw it on the grass? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> or what do you put it into? Do you put it into recycling or you put it in the green ways? I don't know. Oh, oh you know, I just I just think it's cool that I just think it's cool that you know, yeah, maybe company. there will be a fourth can for for, for mushrooms. Yeah, for mushrooms. <laughs> this isn't or, a green waste. It's this just is something nice totally to different. see something that's like plastic is is another way plastic as, uh, as much as it was useful and allowed us to expand and grow super fast, which is great, and yeah. definitely has uses for which it is the superior choice for, mm-hmm. it is definitely super bad for the environment in any yeah. way that we can substitute something else that can do the job just as well and or better or even slightly worse. I'm totally down with. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's that sounds a lot better. If you can do and packaging yeah. instead of styrofoam, why would you not? Yeah. I, it's probably, I'm sure it's more expensive. But I think but, as a as a global community, mm-hmm. I don't think uh, we have a choice. That's what I don't get how something like that could, like that should just be passed on. Like, hey man, all right, bump everybody's taxes like two dollars so we could just 
roll yeah. with that. Well, that's, that's one cool. of the few times I'm down to be much more socialist and just be like, no, we have to use this. Yeah. I don't care. I would just do it just for simply for the experiment, yeah. to be quite honest. I'm yeah. like, yo, can we do a side by side study? Let's do uh let's find out where plastic is at and how much we go through. Okay, cool. We we figured that out. I okay. think people let's are starting to realize that plastic is in everything. And I think yeah, enough of those reports is. of like plastic does not disappear. It just But my gets thing is how did smaller. plastic get onto the scene and how did it become the giant it is there's yeah. no way that motherfucking them dudes that we were talking about the Cro-Magnum men's were talking about using plastic yeah. at whatever point it entered the sphere and for it to be just dominant everything I mean meaning to the point where it, it must seems have like been cheap to make and, and oh, yeah. obviously widely used yeah but it's or strange it's, it's ap- why applicable. why it's why the thing why it is is because you think about it like I got a plastic spoon that's wrapped in plastic that comes yeah. in plastic it comes in plastic you know what I'm saying so it's like that's what? like in a cardboard box that's got like plastic tape on it yeah some sterile shit so I mean I don't know if those mm. have kind of a connect together but mm. I mean as we march forward into this more hyper uh hypersensitive kind of idea where you know sterilization is almost inevitable mm-hmm. but as we go into more sterilization like thinking we can't go into more plastic dude. that's what i'm we thinking right yeah we just can't it was kind of like I, when I'm, they tried to do the paper straw shit so i was like this is horrible i'm not against paper straw some of them are okay but then again i'm also using a paper straw in a plastic cup with a plastic lid you know yeah. what i'm saying oh, like, yeah 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 I feel and, that. The, and the and those it's come like, in a plastic bag like yeah, what no are we that doing part here? that part's funny yeah it's like yeah, you go somewhere it and it's like all right well it's sealed with plastic in a plastic cup that's like half paper half plastic come on man the straw, yeah, that's cardboard, and the straw is the most important part because you yeah. think like, "Yo, this is where on I'm the actually user, doing my on thing." The user yeah. end, yeah, well, it doesn't make sense to me, but that's just me. I get it. We're trying to get away from plastic, which I mm-hmm. totally get. I mean, it's a step. It's, it's a step. step. I, my thing is, I wouldn't mind trying it for in a long period of time just to mm-hmm. see, uh, you know, if it's possible to, you know, not necessarily eliminate plastic, especially at this venture, but at least start. You know, looking at an alternative, especially with mushrooms, like we talk about, I think mushrooms to save the world. They, they are perfectly. That would make a lot of sense for them to use that for packaging. Yeah, mushrooms oh, cool. are going to save us, dude. If oh, we if we that. let them, I think they're going to take over regardless. Like yeah. you said, I think we are the mushrooms, or they are going to take into over. mushrooms one time already, and then like the mushrooms right now are like, yo, you guys are doing it again. Here, let oh. us help you out. Check this out. Look at all these things we can do. Just give us a chance. Dude, I think there's a mushroom kingdom underneath the ground. Oh, then. For sure. Yeah. You know this lizard kingdom, dude. See, so it's when I'm thinking of Super kingdom. Mario, see, everybody thinks Mario Luigi's the guy. It's really the mushroom. It's, it's really the It's really yeah. Toad. Like, yo, really Toad, Toad is the dude, man. Like, yeah, yo, man, you're the guy. Everyone knows Toad is the fastest in Mario Kart 64. Every time. He's Every the time. number one guy to he's use, right? Yeah, uh, oh, and yeah. then on top of that, am I to think that when Mario and Luigi eat the mushroom, like, they're, they get yeah. strong. So then Toad must be... Some like superhuman dude. dude. I always choose Toad if I See, can. See, because what if Toad eats a mushroom? And how helpful is Toad during those missions? He's always the guy that's like got He's the a little key fun guy. Thing. Oh, Mario! I got. <laughs> Did you know if you push A twice, you double jump? So as if he went through the game already. Yeah. That's as if he saying. knew it. That's what I'm saying. Like Come the mushrooms on. already went through the game See, of life once. He's a side character, but he's one of the most recognized characters. Yeah. That's not Mario or Luigi. Yeah. I but would we don't be, know that much about his lore. No. No, no, because no one ever wants to talk Maybe, about him. Yeah. Maybe there is none as far as I'll the make game, an argument and say in, he's as popular as Luigi. Oh, I bet. I bet if you showed a picture of him, people would be like, Toad. Mario. Yeah. At Toad. least. It would go Mario, Yoshi, oh, Yoshi. Toad Luigi, probably like right there. Prin- uh, Princess is up there, too. Yeah, yeah, Princess. But uh, besides that, Bowser, I mean, yeah. you know, whatever. Toad's but, up there. Toad's up there, right? Up but there. no one, mysterious. And he's the guy that gives you all the tips in the game. Come on, man. He's always right, isn't it? It's always like Toad. Come right? on, man. It's always Toad. Yeah. And he's small in stature, so it's like very unassuming. Yeah. And on so top he's of not that, frightening. You think it's like, yo, know, when you get a one up mushroom, you're thinking that's just a picture of Toad. Like, mm-hmm. hey, what? Toad is a one up. Wait, what do you mean a one up? Toad gave me life? Like, what's Toad going on here? Life. Yeah. Come on. Are they telling on, us some secret? They're telling us They're something. They're just trying there. to get us warmed up so that we know mushrooms are here to save us. I mean, think about it. it if they were in Schedule One back in the days, right? Or mm-hmm. now they're in Schedule One. But they right. weren't in Schedule 1 the whole time. No. So that means something happened and so they, they got they put like, in Schedule wait, 1. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't. Yeah, we, we can't control it or something. We don't know so this. Fast. Yeah. So now is like, okay, now we know how to introduce yeah. it back to them. Yeah. So that's why I think slowly we're seeing it kind of rolled out. And it's crazy. This isn't front page news that we're talking about. But this no. th- these things are happening quickly. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like mushroom farming in all the places that marijuana is being talked about being legalized. Mushrooms are hand in hand, if not already ahead of the process. Yeah. A lot of people possibly speculate that's going to be people who are studying there. the mushrooms, they they are aware. They're hyper aware. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, this is 
on game revolution. changing yeah stuff. revolutionary shit this is this yeah. is like if we embrace the mushrooms our civilization is gonna change i'm thinking this is textile this is like across the board yeah. oh mushroom game leather changing. yeah come on uh, man mushroom uh, why not mushroom fabric i've seen mushroom hats i've seen a mushroom hat like hard ready to roll really like, yeah. everything gonna go yeah, yeah. They, they they are so uh in versatile. variety versatile mm. that it's like oh, they we just Maybe have to find it and apply it correctly. Maybe that's what we just have to figure that out. How we do we apply them the, the most useful? What? That's how to cure world hunger mm-hmm. is mushrooms. It has to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm definitely uh, slightly allergic to some of them, but but how many are there? There's so many. That's I'm what sure, I'm saying. I'm sure there's plenty that I'm not. Yeah. yeah. See, so that's what I'm like thinking. I don't care. I'm I like, still eat them. This got to be. <laughs> I mean, imagine the the medicine field, the food industry, Dude. plastics. I mean, toys, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we might have mentioned it one time where McDonald's or one of those things, same thing, packaging or toys are going to start being made out of like, uh, biodegradable, plastic and stuff. something like that, right? Why not? Dude, 3D printing's here. I mean, I shit. It, why would you not? I know. Just for the fuck of it. Like, yo, we just a mushroom kingdom at this point. I think that'd be cool. That'd be cool as fuck. Isn't that a place in Mario? It, it probably kingdom? is. That's the place that no one's ever been. That's the last, 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 That's last, 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 last level. That's like our superpower leaders. They're do, they're actually playing in that right now, Fuck and they're like, a. "We got to figure this out." So when when they get to it, we could still be in charge. Yeah, we <laughs> need to create our own yeah. away from this. So yeah. then leave this to them. But then we Maybe have another the, one. The after the metaverse is the. Mushroom verse. Maybe that's what meta means is mushroom. Maybe. Mushroom verse. That makes We're sense. Going to the etymology of <laughs> meta later. Meta later. Uh, let the people know what they need to hear, P. Uh, it's cold outside, so Oof. keep drinking your water. With that scarf. Room temperature is a little bit better. Hot cider. Warm. Mold wine. Mold wine. Get your Check mold wine. Get your mold wine. Get your bad <laughs> wine heated up. Put some spice in it. <laughs> Reduce, reuse the recycling. Mm, mm. Uh, mushrooms are gonna save us yes vote yes. us into some kind of office yes yes, yes, uh, yes drink yes. your water water be kind to others kind, especially kind. now yeah, others not just your neighbor yeah. but everyone mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh what do i say oh listen to listen not just to respond boom happy holidays food happy junkie holidays. radio episode 40 appreciate it